vlog today. We called it quits a little early. It's been really hot and difficult to work with the epoxy today. Um, and we are making progress, albeit at a snail's pace. Can you hear the wind? It's crazy out there. And it's just a couple hours later since I recorded the first video. Um, and it's nine, still 95 degrees down in the cabin. And we are eating junk out here. We're gonna eat junk for dinner out here in the cockpit. We're gonna have tostitos. We have some hummus. Thank you, Ika, for that. And Ika and Nick and pepperoni from Jana and Dwight, um, cheese, and of course some leftover happy hour. It sounds as though fellow cruisers are feeding us, and in a way they are. We have been the lucky recipients of food being cleared out of pantries. We always have kind thoughts of friends that are headed north as we eat the treats they left behind with us. With the heat in the cabin still high at bedtime, we chose to sleep outside in the cockpit to a cacophony of banging, whistling, and other wind-generated noises. By sunrise, the wind had subsided and the temperature broken. The weather is in flux, with the odd norther now bringing heat from the American southwest, and humid summer southerlies struggling to become the dominant weather pattern. The southerly conditions bring heavy morning dews and wreak havoc with the exposed balsa. The dew causes the yard dirt to run down the cabin sides in rivulets. We now cover the balsa at night to protect it from the moisture. The weather also influences our work schedule. If you have worked with epoxy, you know heat decreases pot life once mixed with the hardener. What we didn't know and what our friend Craig pointed out to us is the fact that a heating substrate causes outgassing in curing epoxy. This was brought home to us when I, in the middle of the day, filled holes on the foredeck thinking it didn't matter because each hole only contained a small amount of epoxy. Wrong. The heat caused bubbles to appear in the epoxy, and some holes even oozed out the epoxy when originally they had been filled just flush with the deck. In contrast, these are the holes I filled on the same day just as the sun was going down. As the deck cooled, the epoxy was sucked down into the balsa coring. Most of the cured epoxy is now below deck level, and it is apparent the epoxy penetrated into the wood. Of course, the holes will need another filling, but that is easy enough to do. We now schedule our epoxy work so it is done on a cool or cooling deck. After bedding the balsa on the port side, Lee decided to remove more coring on the starboard side as we had plenty of replacement balsa and he found it easier to bed and fit larger pieces than smaller pieces. While he did that, I did more sanding. To help keep the decks cooler, and well for those of us in the cabin, we put the awning up. As I moved around on the foredeck, struggling with the forward awning, I noticed an area that gave just a little under my foot. It felt as though the top skin was not attached to the coring. Since we had already cut open so much, 
What was just a little more to satisfy curiosity? I hesitate to call it a delamination, oh, wow. as the coring is oh, obviously yeah. in good condition. Dry, there. To me, it appears that it was not thoroughly laminated at the factory, and with the teak bridging the area, the lack of adhesion was not obvious. The very same afternoon, we set up our mixing station on the foredeck. Lee wetted out the surfaces. I mixed up a thicker batch of epoxy using colloidal silica, and then the skin was weighted and screwed down. The area is now firmly bonded. On the port side, you can see Lee removing the screws from our first test run. He has decided he prefers screwing the piece down along the seams, as the seam will eventually be beveled, layers of cloth epoxied down, and the areas tied together. We have had a few epoxy oopses, one we were unaware of until I noticed the strange stains on the upholstery which I might add are now permanent, and after a little sleuth work, it was obvious who the culprit was. We are now more careful about who accesses the work area. The other oops was a masking tape failure on the bolt hole for the sail track sheet lead. This, I am pleased to say, was not permanent. While we have been absorbed by our work, cruisers are hauling out, calling an end to the sailing season, and heading north. Farewell get-togethers and more boats in the yard. For us, we continue to work and anticipate splashing the end of May. There may be a little bit more painting that can be done on the water, and we hope to spend the summer in the sea, if we can hack the heat. Join us next week to see what progress we have made. So, until then!